Hi, welcome to Christie's Stampin' Spot. I'm Christy. I'm an um, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the United States. Welcome. We have, I have moved my once Thursday double feature to Friday. So today is my inaugural um, Friday's double feature and um, today we are going to be playing with the Hippos Hippos, which is a celebration stamp set. It's available um, while supplies last or to the end of August. So let's go ahead and get started and let me set you guys down. Transition. Yay! Okay. So these are the cards that we're going to make today. Um, I've used that adorable hippo. So this is the, the stamp set, the Hippus Hippos, which is the celebration, level one. And when we say level one or level two, a level one is a stamp set that you can get for free with a $50 order. And um, with the level two, it's a, we have several. I guess I can, I can show you guys the actual things. So this stamp set, Amazing Phrases, this is a level two. So when you spend $100 my online store, um, before shipping and tax, you can choose this item for free or two of the level ones. Um, we have this beautiful paper. Now, unfortunately, one of our things is already sold out, and that, that's like the envelopes. And But all the other stuff is still available. So the envelopes, unfortunately, and um, card bases have already sold out, but we still have these fabulous hippos, hippos, which I'm very excited. Like I love these hippos. They're totes adorbs. So I'm really happy to bring you guys up today. And like I said, this is a level one. And what's awesome is also, um, for that's also a level one, is the matching dies. And these dies you can use if you've got the penguin set, matches the penguin. These are really super cute summer um, dies. They're fantastic. So um, we are using in the holiday catalog. So for the first card, we are again using that, the, the hippo. And I've already stamped them and, and die cut out, but I'm going to color them. But this um, fabulous Halloween designer series paper, if you've gone through um, our catalog and you're like, well, I don't remember seeing that, that is because it is our host um, designer series paper. It's called Celebrate Everything, and it's an $18, it's a $30 value. It's 48 sheets, which means you get four of each of um, the 12 double-sided de designs and there are several there are several that you can use for Halloween that's in this big pack of paper it's super awesome and you're saying well how do you get that with the use your um, Stampin' Rewards and Stampin' Rewards is something that you can get when you spend $150 or if you and a few of your friends like do a party and they you know if, if all three of you do um, $50 orders you can get that that uh, 150 and then you guys can, can even split that pack of paper. But with the, when you reach 150, Stampin' Up! gives you um, rewards to spend from them. And in the new holiday catalog, our reward, um, special hostess rewards are these, the super cute ca caroling mice stamp set, as well as this fabulous ev Celebrate Everything designer series paper. And I really do, it really is an awesome, huge, huge pack, huge pack of paper. It has lots of Christmas some trees. There's also like, looks like fireworks for um, the New Year's Eve. Um, there's, I mean, it's just really so many pretty pieces in here. And there is the Halloween. What can I do? And then there's also like stars. So, um, let's see. My hands are not wanting to, to do the thing today. I'm pretty sure I've shown you guys this before. But if not, got this red striped, it's really pretty polka dot, the green with um, a rainbow stripe, which is lovely. There's the red with these, almost looks like Christmas trees or just triangles. You could do either one, but oh my gosh, it's a very dramatic. On the back side, you have a dramatic black with that, the fireworks, this great granny apple green, this bright green, this could be a par um, parakeet. The parakeet, the new, our new green it could be. It's really pretty. And then there's like a fall um, leaf. There's this beautiful blue chevron. It's, um, and then it's this lovely pattern. And then here's those um, Halloween. I really like this Halloween paper. It's super cute. 
And then on the other side is this lovely stripe. And that's actually the piece that we're using today. Um, I just flipped it around to use both pieces. And I'm going to show you how to, I colored that, that ribbon so that it matched. I have this really big um, wood grain here, which you can also use for Halloween, or even some of your nature ones. It has a nice, um, it's like a grid almost on the back side. Here's some lovely. I like this one too. This one I think is um, very Halloween-y. And then it's got this nice yellow. And again, it's like, this is like the crushed curry, right? And this has got that, that black. Here's more red. This, this could use be for birthdays or for Christmas. But this side's definitely Christmas with all those pretty ornaments. We've got another green. I don't know if it, I, I'll have to look and see if this is supposed to be the new parakeet party or it's granny apple. Then we have black and white trees on the back side of that. Here's some black and white um, fireworks, although I really like that, the black one the, with the color ones. And then there's that pretty nice scallops. And then we have some pretty pink, uh, just, I don't know, you can use that for either like snowflakes or flowers or, you know, just like a f pretty background. And then, of course, there's some candy. Um, but it's definitely Christmas because you've got a gingerbread guy and, and then that gives us like mistletoe for holly. So, like I said, this pack of paper is for, you can use your Stampin' Rewards. And it is huge. It's a huge pack, 48 sheets of, of designer series paper. But I love the Halloween we do have the black and white on one side and the black and gray for the Halloween. Um, I know I've, I, I've used it a couple times, though I don't know if I've shown you guys. But when you're looking in your holiday catalog, the best thing to do is at the very back of your holiday catalog, it, your, your new mini, or any of the minis actually, is there's so many things in here that you can miss that always go into the back where we have it all. Stampin' Up! has really put all of the things in the back so it's easier for you to find. Because one of the things that we're going to use today is the embossing folder um, from uh, that's in this catalog. It's really kind of hard to find. Do you guys see that lovely, the embossed, that embossed leaves in the background? So those embossed leaves, like, um, I found it actually. I didn't see it the first time through. I actually saw it on here where we had the page, the embossing folders. Because here's where, here's where we have listed our three embossing folders on page 81 and it's this fall leaf 3d and it is um let's see if i make that two there we go make that. yeah so this one right here and it is actually on page 58 or no 53 well even with my glasses i have a hard time seeing 53 i actually had it marked but look it doesn't really show it to you this is the page 53. Now I need to make it go back out so you guys can see the whole page. But it's actually showing it up here, right here. So you can quickly go past, especially when you're looking at all the pretty Thanksgiving, um, to see that embossing folder. And we're going to use that today. I really think it's, it's a really pretty embossing, uh, embossing folder. Plus we're going to use, I'm actually going to use the stars from our punch, from the Witch Hat Builder Punch. Um, that's what I use actually for the stars by my ballerina hippo. And the Halloween happiness is actually from um, the Scary Cute, that stamp set. I love these. They have some really cute. So there's not a happy Halloween um, stamp in this mini, but there are some super cute sentiments. So the witch, and see here's that white and black. And then on one side, and it's gray and black on the other side. Designer shares paper, but if you've got it, haunt it. Best wishes. You put a spell on me. I'm like so now in the mood for Halloween. Um, uh, so this is where I have the Halloween happiness. Trick or treat. You're so sweet. Love it. First bite. And then this, the, the, witch, the witch hats don't have, the bewitching hats don't have a sentiment. Um, but they do have that really nice punch. Okay. So that is this card. And then this one I've just used. That really pretty um, embossing folder that I showed you. And then this is actually from our de designer series paper that is a part of Celebration. The Rings of Love. Now, I've used that quite a bit because I love it. It is such a gorgeous pack of paper. And you can find that on page six. It matches this be the beautiful um, Ringed with Nature bundle. I really love that bundle, too. Um, but this paper is just gorgeous. And this is like a level one. 
you can get with your 50%. And I love to fussy cut. Um, and, and boy, have I fussy cut. If I, like, went through and cut, although this one you can actually, like, cut up the trimmings. I went in and cut um, lots of leaves so that I can make this card because I just love, I just love the detail of these very pretty leaves. I love it with the crumb cake. It's very fall to me. But it's kind of a simple, almost monochromatic with a little, using a little bit of that early espresso box suede, um, the faux suede trim. Um, I think it just really brings it together. So um, I love this paper. Again, it's only available while supplies last or till August 31st. And it's free. You can choose it for free with your $50 order. So, I, yeah, I've used this a bunch, especially this page. This, this page I love it. And you'll be seeing more because I cut them all out. So I've used some of the mushrooms. I'm going to have something with just the holly pieces. But for today, I just went through and cut out a bunch of these really pretty leaves. There's all kinds. And even, even the ones that are on the half on the edge, I've cut them out too. Because you can always, the way you position them behind your, um, your image is when you when you build your bouquet, um, you can just slide them in. You just make sure you use that piece where it, you, it doesn't show. That way you can use all of the pieces that you've cut out. You want to get the most that they possibly can out of this paper. I love it so much. Okay, so this is the Rings of Love um, Designer Series Paper Pack. That is the level one um, that you can choose for free in the Celebration Catalog. Okay, so now let's get stamping. Okay, so it is here in Arizona. <laughs> it has been stormy, and it's been very hard to predict like how much storm we are going to get and when it's going to when it's going to show up. So um, I did a lot of the prep work for these cards today. It's, it's been a while since I've been on, and I have a whole new system. I actually had to enlist two of my children to actually help me <laughs> figure out the sound. So hopefully, you guys are hearing me much better this time. And there's not as much background um, playing with all the different noise can cancellation stuff. And, oh my goodness, there's always so much, so much to going on. Um, let's get started. So let's start with this pretty card here. Okay, so we're going to use the, I use the hippo, the hippest hippos. And it is, I'm going to use this ballerina butterfly um, image. And I cut it out already. And here we go. I actually did a few. But I just stamped it and I cut it out with our fabulous Hippo Dives, which is also a level one. Um, I just have to stand up to do it. <laughs> so I went ahead and cut it beforehand. And I actually really love, um, especially since our magnetic, they had to recall our magnetic plate because it was separating. Um, Stampin' Up! always has a really high quality. Um, they really want really high quality and it wasn't meeting it. There was some glue from the manufacturer and so they were separating. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have our magnet plate. I love it. But I, the, the tape works fine, too. But I still love, I miss the magnet plate. But um, so I just went ahead and die cut them early. So when I don't have that, I like to die cut them out before I color them. Um, because I hate for it to mess up. I'd hate for me to color the whole thing and be beautiful and then cut, mess it up using the die cut. Especially when I just want to reach for my my um, fussy to fussy cut with my scissors. However, the, the these dies are awesome. Um, the little scuba has like a little the little life saver ring. And the water and the um, like little water things. There's more water. I guess it splashes. Is that what that is? And a boat and a tub and goggles and scuba equipment. <laughs> it's so super cute. Little snorkel. Um, this is a great set of dies. And again, it will actually work with most, a lot of our, our um, critters. I know you've seen it used with our penguin, our penguin punch, but love that. So I have already die cut that out. And set this aside. And then I also die cut out um, a big circle. And this is with our, um, this stitch circle is with our stylish, the other one to do our stylish shapes, which is our new all. I mean, if you haven't gotten this one, this is a great time to get this because uh, when you want to try to get to that fifty dollars, <laughs> and there's something you want. But I love these. If you haven't gotten these yet, so they have um, the big circle, 
which is the one that we use today. I actually set it aside so I can show you. And I use this big, the biggest, the biggest stitch circle on both cards that I'm doing today. And then this is our little um, banner, and that's what I use to cut out the sentiment. Love it, so pretty. And I just use it on the basic white. Love these. So if you haven't gotten these, that's definitely something you need for your um, for your stash because it comes in so handy. Okay, set that over here so I can see it and not um, intrude. Okay, so I started with. So I've got all the things. <laughs> I started with a, um, let me go ahead and, and zoom out again while I tell you all the things. Um, with a crushed curry card base, and I love the 11, 11 inches by four and a quarter, and that I just cut a piece of our eight and a half by um, 11, and I just cut it at four and a quarter all the way down. So this is 11, four and a quarter, and then it scored at the five and a half. Um, almost all of my um, card fronts you can put on if you like the book fold which is the eight and a half um, when you cut it at eight and a half by five and a half and then score at four and a quarter so but this one I love it when they open up it just it, I think it photographs better so I really enjoy the, the up fold <laughs> so you start with one of those in crush curry and then I did cut one of those fabulous um, celebrate everything um, designer series, series paper um, panels um, and I'm going to use the really cute ghosts and pumpkins is going to be up front. Then I cut another strip of the same designer series paper, and it's at five and a half. So, so my panel is at four and five and a quarter, but I actually did a strip that's in five and a half by one. So if you want it to get to fit exactly on top of your panel, then go ahead and do that at five and a quarter. But I want it to overlap a little bit, so I did it at um, the five and a half. And then I'm going to use um, our fabulous... Um, what is this? the gingham, cut two pieces of the, the gingham ribbon, the black and white gingham ribbon, and we're going to color it with um, our Stampin' Blends to get this lovely, to add that color, because the, the white just the color is so nice. So you can do it with any color if you want to add that to it. It works really good for the Halloween. Okay, and then of course, I always cut two extra strips, because I love it on the inside and the back of the card, and they are at a, um, a half inch, so yeah, a half inch by four. And I'm going to use um, this side. So, although it would look pretty with the other side too, but I, I just love all the Halloween details. So we're going to definitely do that. And I'm not using this one. And then I am going to need some stars for this. And I'm going to use that by just punching out the stars with the witch builder, uh, hat builder punch. And you don't need a lot. You just need to go ahead and put three in there. Three. I'm actually stamped. I um, already punched a bunch, but go. We be in. All right. So now we can put. And then this is our inside, my inside panel, which I always do mine a little bit smaller than like my front panel. So it's at three and seven eighths by five and one eighth, and that fits really nice inside. It gives me a little bit bigger border on the inside, so it's a little bit less right in. So it doesn't feel like there's like a lot of white space, um, but it makes it look nice. So I love that. Okay. So let's we can go ahead and get started with the card base. So I'm just going to glue down my panel, on uh, my front panel onto um, my crush curry card base. Do go ahead and put that in. And I do like using the glue because it does give me a little bit more wiggle room, which I need more on more often. Love it. Such a cute paper. I love this paper. Okay. And then for this other one, I'm going to need my stamp and seal. And I'm going to go ahead and put, actually, let, let's color the, let me color my um, ribbon first. And I need some scrap paper. And I actually grabbed some, I just set it down over here. And I'm going to, I know I've got scrap paper down, but I need more scrap paper. So I did one of these in black. I don't remember which which ribbon I was doing with black, but then my little my little pink um, mat underneath got the ink, because Tampin Blends will bleed through. So I'm going to take my dark um, Daffodil Delight uh, Stampin' Blend, and I'm going to use the brush end. How bad that is. I need to get a new one, because it's in really bad shape. Um, and then I'm just going to 
just drag it along. Like I said, make sure you have extra paper because it does um, bleed through. I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and do this so we can give it a little bit. This doesn't need too much as these are alcohol markers. Um, they don't need that much time to dry, but you do need a little bit of time to dry. Especially if you put a lot of, of the ink down so that it's um, really nice. And we're going to use one. We're going to um, wrap around it and attach it with seal. And then we're going to actually make a ribbon and just attach it with some glue dots. I am actually waiting on uh, um, my Stampin' Up! I have a uh, package coming today. I am out of glue dots. I've been out of glue dots for like two weeks. Luckily, I love my, one of the things I love about my paper pumpkin is that I get, I keep all my extra um, little glue dots. They're, they're really great for traveling, and I really love them actually for, to attach um, sequins, but when you run out of your big glue dots, you've got these, I've got the like, packages of them, which makes it nice. Okay, so while that's drying a little bit, let's color our hippo. So there's, now that we have our fabulous natural tones, we do have a little bit more of a choice. Um, I actually went ahead and used ivory to color my um, hippo. So let's see. I'm going to make sure I get all the right colors here. So I do use the crush curry on her skirt. And then I think I use a light gray granite for her body. And um, I use the dark smoky slate for, for her little fingernails. And I think that's that's basically okay. So I just want to get mixed up with all the other colors because I've got for both. I actually colored my hippos a little bit different on both. I'll show you guys a couple of different techniques. But I like to start with the inside first. And look at that. I set it down and put it back. Here we go. Ivory. Actually, I want to use the. So I like ivory. It's our our one of our tones that we had. When you get this, you can get the bronze and the ivory in a pack. And now, because I'm going to color, I should be able to zoom in. See that? I'm just going to make sure I keep it on camera. I'm just going to color it. Um, I'm not going to go too close to the edges. I'm not like the best colorist, but I will go back to the edges with the fine pen, so I can get a little bit of it done before so it doesn't take so long. You guys to watch me color and color and color. Although I love coloring. Coloring is one of those parts of stamping that makes me so happy. Oh, did you guys hear that? I mean, you probably can't hear it. I just heard my name. Um, I wanted to say I wanted to go earlier, but there's no way I can go get earlier. I'm just not a, I'm not more a morning person. I'm trying to get everything together and then this morning like I said I was having everyone help me with well, my son and my daughter help me with the sound and hopefully I've eliminated some of that so that it's better to hear me oh, so cute okay so also if you look at how she is it's got a little bit of of um, the tummy underneath her little tutu which is pretty if you can do this one too for um not just for Halloween. We are dressed up as a ballerina for, ballerina for Halloween. So if you can see, like, there's a little bit more dark on one side. Um, you can blend it however you like. It does lighten when after it dries. But if you find that you've got too much... Um, you need to... It does lighten want to make sure you don't you don't want it to be too blotchy I like a little bit of blotchy but not too much okay so that's the ivory for the inside and then I'm going to use the gray granite the light gray granite again I'm going to use the tip for the mate for you know the brush tip for the most and I'll go back with the other this, um, to do the um, then so cute. Oh my gosh. These hippos are so toast adorbs. Two. Really like them. 
So I had to move my, uh, instead of Thursday, Thursday seemed to be crazy. Do you guys have one of those days of the week that no matter what you do, it ha you have 50 things that come up on that day? So I had all this stuff ready to go yesterday, but I just kind of like, I have surrender. I'm going to have to change something else so that I can uh, do the, the Fridays because something always comes up. I can start to hear, I can hear the thunder, hopefully. Hopefully it's not interfering with the video quality. Hoping it's not. I wanted to check to see. Thought I was going to go on and tell me. To make sure everything looked good. It sounded good. Oop, and my son and my daughter were like, yay. It's awesome. They're so fabulous. Okay. So then, let's go ahead. Switch coloring her up. So cute. So yeah, so coloring actually is very soothing. I had to do the whole like die cut. I had it all colored, and maybe I can show all the die cutting and stuff. I was kind of afraid to go too long that um, the storm was going to come upon us. It's so hard to tell with our storms here in Arizona, especially down here. We've got some our monsoons in full sort of swing. And we came home. We went and saw what movie was it last week? Uh, no, it was this week. It was Tuesday. We went and saw, um, oh, Paws of Fury, <laughs> which was quite silly fun. But um, when we got out of the theater, it was like, crap. Like, there was so much, so much lightning. And um, I don't think I've seen it that, that good in a really long time. I'm just using the dark smoky slate on our fingernails. It's so cute. Oh, my goodness. And then I forgot I wanted to use some, a little bit of an ivory in her ears. And then I'm just going to use the Wink of Stella on her eyes. And then um, I'm going to use the Daffodil, the Dark Daffodil Delight, which is similar to our, I mean, it's not as, it's not exactly like our Crush Curry, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, I think it looks lovely. So going ahead and just using, I'm just going to use the Bullet Tip for this. All that ink on there. So cute. These are just totes adorbs. This little ballerina is adorable. And then her little pointy toe shoes. Just hold my tongue just right to color it in. All right, awesome sauce. Muy bien. Okay, and then, I, like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of wink, a wink on her eyes. I love Wink of Stella, a glitter brush. Super cute. Absolutely totes adorbs. Okay, so then, these should be, this should be completely dry. Our um, made uh, ribbon. Let me go ahead and pull you guys out again. Oh, that was, like, really quick. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the new, um, all the new uh, platform. Okay, so you're going to need your stamp and seal. And I'm going to put it on the back right here. I find stamp and seal, and I think stamp and seal plus two, but I love the stamp and seal. I think what I use it the most for is to attach my ribbons. Nothing works as well. Like, I love it. Um, I don't know if you remember, it's been a while, but back in the day, I also want to add one little piece of... Um, one of these blue dots to the back. Um, we had that, oh, it was like wire. What is it called? Our silver thread, metallic thread. It was just like, it was It was beautiful, but it was, so, it was wild. <laughs> it, was, it really was wild to use. And the only thing I could do is use a little bit of that stamp and seal to tape it, to tame it, and it worked pretty good. Okay, so I'm, I just added one little d blue dot to the back. Like I said, I like the um, of the ribbon. I didn't use like a you know piece of tear and tape or even more of the stamp and seal. I find that just using one of the little the little goo dots helps, and and because it's one of the little ones, it just went um, flat. But you could use a little a little bit of your um, stamp and seal if you want. It works good too. Okay, so then I'm going to get my glue out. Look, I have a little bit of extra. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off save that. Maybe I'll use it on a different project. And then I need my glue. And I'm going to go ahead and add that. And 
I do add quite a bit. Do a little bit of glue on there, but don't make sure make sure you don't use too much glue when you I don't know if you've used glue a lot, but try to not make it exactly on the edges if you're gonna have a lot because you don't want it to to goo out. So when it does, I make I make such a mess because I always put way too much glue. There we go. So and like I said, this goes from edge to edge. So it doesn't sure when you're putting it on, it's edge to edge instead of um, on this panel. If you were going to do it shorter, it might be easy to put it put put on to attach it to. You were just putting it on to the panel um, to attach it to that panel before you attach it to the card. Um, that way you can like hold it, hold it like this to make sure you've got it. Um, you've got it on there straight and flush. I should say flush. It's the right word. A little bit more. Yeah, I'm still, so I'm still learning the new, our new fabulous, um, my nanny cam. <laughs> it's new, new, upgraded. Everything is always new and upgraded. Okay, I can move this out of the way. Don't need that. And this is when we make my, so it is, so when you add the, um, the stamp and blend, it does make it a little bit stiffer. But I like, and I think I cut, I don't know what, what size this is. Um, this, of course, I have the one with the site. Let's see. Oops, that's not. What did I do with my? It's right here, underneath. Do do do. I can't get my finger out of there. Isn't that funny? Oh, okay. It is. I want to say seven and a half inches. Eight. Yeah, seven and a half inches. So I've cut about seven and a half inches for both the, this piece that went across and to tie my bow. I'm going to start with the loop so it's a little bit, like I've got a little bit of a tail, but not too much. And then I'm going to go around and pull it through. I like little tiny bows. But that's the only, um, when I make the bow that I'm going to do later, I'm actually going to leave it on the spool. But because you have to, you've got to color it, I don't leave it on the spool, but I want a little bitty, little bitty ribbon, I mean a bow we're going to put onto the side. So, and I, I kind of like that when we've added that the stamp and the stamp and blend, the actual ink actually makes it a little bit. I'm going to wait until we put it on there before I cut, before I trim it. That's that. And then because I'm not stamping on this, I am just um, going to be placing it here. So you'll just need your stamp and dimensionals. And I'm just going to put three. Just make sure when you're when you're doing this, you put it on the right side. So our stitching does well. You can't really tell, but the stitching is one side. You can see it. It's smoother on the other side. See that? A little smoother. Let's go ahead and take off my stamp dimensional parts. Go ahead. And I kind of have it, it's a little bit lower than halfway, a little bit over the edge. See a little bit more of the pattern. There we go, just like that. So super cute. Okay, and then let's add our, uh, let's add our um, sentiment. I think I add my sentiment first. So like I said, I, I die cut out um, the little banner with um, the stylish shape. And then I'm going to stamp, and I'm going to stamp the Halloween happiness, and that is, oops, I almost knocked the water over, Halloween happiness, and I, where did I put that one? That one is from my um, Scary Cute, I love this set, super cute, that's where that one's from, and I'm going to use my Memento Black. Okay. Oh, oh no! And then try not to transfer it. Okay, I got a little bit of black smudge on that one. Okay, luckily I made two. Try not to pick up any ink from your... Um, so, I don't know if you... I have to clean these every once in a while. You see how I've got so much ink around the edge? I think it's because the way I lift off my, um, my ink pad. If you get that and you touch it in your fingers, then you can transfer it. So. I usually take a wet, a, a light, lightly damp 
um, paper towel and go all the way around it. I try to do that actually, um, depending on how often I use it. I forgot to do that today. earlier, and then I transferred ink. So to my tag, just that, like that. <gasps> go! Super yay! Now I did do it a little bit higher. Than kind of go, um, she's going to, uh, she kind of um, goes over the edge there, right, like overlaps it a little bit. I'm just going to add a couple stand up dimensionals. I'm just going to add it right to my, and my fingers are having trouble today. Gonna have it kind of like that. Let's see. Where do I want her to be? Kind of like that. Oh, that's so cute. So yeah, there we go. Like that. And I can go ahead and add her. Oh, did I add? I think I added to her her skirt too, didn't I? I did. I should add a little bit before I add her. And then because I am gonna put it up against here. Make sure when you're doing that, you don't put your, your stamp and dimensional too up high so that it, it butts up. Right? You want to make sure you give enough room um, when you're lapping. I did put a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit. I did not add any to her skirt. There we go. So this is a, a pretty simple card, but so cute. Oh my gosh, these hippos are so adorable. Okay. Then... much. There we go. So you see how I have it so that you want, you know you're going to overlap it. You want to try to make sure you get your sentiment on there. And then of course you can always re rearrange it if you, you actually are good and get really centered and you have to lower your, your hippo. It looks pretty good off the edge. So just remember if you're doing that to not put, um, don't put any dimensionals under her, her toes, right? It's because they're going to hang off. But it doesn't hang off too much. Okay, and then we're going to put ah, the ribbon just like that. So, do, I'm going to just take my ribbon scissors. I do love the little bows. I always try. I, every once in a while, I'm like, I'm going to make a big bow. And then I try, and then I'm like, no, I just can't. I like them tiny. I don't know why that is. Okay, and then I'm going to add. I was kind of hoping I would have got my package. I might actually get it <laughs> while we're live. The UPS guy might come by because um, like I said, I'm out of my glue dots. But like I said, I got these from um, my paper pumpkin which I love. Oh my gosh. The paper pumpkin that this month, July is so gorgeous. I'm like, I love it to watch. Okay, so I'm just going to add, so you can see right here where they have the edges. I'm just going to kind of so it kind of overlaps. So it's like on top of the ribbon. But it overlaps a little bit of my um, tag as well as this stitched oval. So it looks like that. And now all it needs is some stars, right? So I punch those stars. And this is where your tick the tick tool is awesome to pick up those little pieces. I was going to tell you. They're awesome. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead. And what the other thing is they have different <laughs> sizes in the um, paper pumpkin. I like hoard them. So I was kind of sad. I'm dipping into my reserves, my uh, reserves from the um, just gonna add one. Doo -doo -doo, my paper pumpkin for my, like I said, I use these for uh, sequins or for like little bitty things when you're trying to, to add something small. And it has like little, little bitty spaces. Some of the sprigs, the die cut flowers and stuff have kind of like little spaces to add them on. Um, I love the little, I just love these. Do -do -do. Although I love the big ones too. But again, like I said, I hoard these. Okay, how do I have this? Like my little stars. Aren't the stars super cute? So cute. So cute. Go. Make sure it's on the right. 
Awesome! All right, there you go. That is all we need for our card front. Let's see if I can slowly undo. Not let you guys sick. There we go. So you can see that better. Okay, and now we just have to do the inside. Like I said, I have a um, basic white, and then we want to add our glue, our strip of that gorgeous. I love this. this is so cute that. Um, celebrate everything. Designer series paper, the host paper. Just put that strip match to so bring that that whole thing through. And then I think I think on this one I put it. Yeah, I did on the bottom. Kind of. I don't know. Right now I'm like in a kick. I like it on the bottom. So you need to make sure you put your your strip on first, so that you kind of know where to put your um your sentiment. That. I usually like to stamp my sentiment first because um, if you mess up, <laughs> you're only out of a piece of, of white, right? You're not out of your strip. So I try to be extra careful with that. And then it needs some more stars. So again, this is so, this is why having a punch, I, I really love the punches because they come, come so in handy. Not just for labels, but and especially when you're doing these little bitty things. So nice. Although I think we have some starred eyes that are really nice too, but this is just quick. Like I said, I'm on a Halloween kick. It's my Halloween. I'm going to do um, my 13, 13 weeks, but it's going to be um, like on Mondays because holiday, Halloween's on a Monday. So I have, it's worth, by next week, it'll be 14 weeks till 14 Mondays until Halloween. So I'll be doing a new project. Every Monday, a new Hall Halloween project. Every Monday, oh, my husband's home for um, for to get ready for Halloween, and then we'll do something extra special on actual Halloween because it'll be too late <laughs> by then to, to purchase stuff to make stuff. But we might just look at, do something fun, make something fun um, for that last minute, whatever last minute thing. I haven't decided yet, but I am working on those. I have, most likely though, they won't be lives. I'll be doing those um, videos and um, posting them on Mondays at, spe at a specific time. So, um, so live, but I'll still be coming live on Friday for my demo feature. And, oh my gosh, these are so cute. One's like really tiny. Uh-oh. I think I've, I've buggered the... Messed it up. <laughs> I've messed it up. I messed my glue dot. I missed the glue dot on the little piece. That's the only problem. My fingers. Go. Do do. I think I just stamped... I think I just punched another big one out the inside, but looks so cute. Oh my gosh. Right? It looks so cute. Okay. So let's add that to the inside. And I'm going to do something different for the out, for the um, back that I did on my, uh, my original. I used the stamp set, the, the, the star set that is in the, um, uh, the one with the three witches. Be is it, no, bewitching is, I think, is it bewitching? No, what is the three witches? I have them all right here. Actually, I don't know. That's the three witches. Bewitching is the one that I'm going to use that matches the um, punch. These are dark stars. So on this one, in the back, I have, you can do where you can do the line to make a, a background with it, um, which is super cute, but it's like the line, and then I added the black stars. So on this one, I'm just going to actually just stamp the black stars so I don't have to, like, punch out more. But if you like that, you can totally add those black stars to the back. Um, okay, so I need another strip to finish. I've got it way over here. I oh, my fingers are, my hands are not working really great. There we go. I do love this paper. It's so cute. And I love that it's a pack of, you get four pieces because um, then you really feel like, oh, I've got so much. You don't, you don't feel like you have to be so sparingly with it. You'd be like, yeah, I can use it. And use a lot of it. 
All right, and then again, I do like to, of course, always add the angel policy, which is our Stampin' Up! logo. Again, this is from the limited edition. Um, I use it with Memento ink. What else did I do to the back? Oh, yeah, the stars. Okay. So, um, I'll show you. So, on the one with the three witches, it has an open, right? And then, the, but the one that's from the bewitching is the closed stars. And so, that one I went all the way across because it, you can see how it's cut. Now, I actually um, co closely cut mine because I hate halos. And I've been using Tampin' Up! Old School we ha where they didn't come pre-cut. So, I had to do it my <laughs> myself. I'm used to doing it myself. So there we go. I'm just added it that. I need um, doo -doo -doo. this. I like the close the black stars. There we go. Uh oh, I hear my kitty. Can't go out. Can't go out. Storming. So there you go. That is card one. Isn't that super cute? With this everything, celebrate everything. Designer's paper. We've colored our gingham ribbon. Um, with the stylus shape circle and um, our banner die and our super cute hippest hippo. That's super cute. So cute, that hippo. Um, it's a cute, fun Halloween card that's not scary, um, but still themed. So that is card one. Now, so our second card, we're going to use um, the uh, another one of the hippos. This one is where it looks like he's dancing. Now, originally I was thinking I would cut out a bunch of leaves and have them like jumping in to um, the leaves, but then I was like, oh, once I started playing with it, I, I changed my mind. <laughs> I don't know how you guys, if you guys, um, when you're designing it, you think in your head you want it one way, and then once you start doing it, you're like, oh, you know what? I like it a different way. Okay, so I need to do, 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 get all my pieces out here. You're going to use another one of those big stitched circles from the Stylus Shapes. And then crumb cake. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to start with a crumb cake uh, card base this time. And it, again, I cut it in the same uh, 11 by 4 and a quarter, scored at 5 and a half. Um, I love, I just love the way. And this is our lovely crumb cake. And then I cut another panel of the crumb cake. And this one is at. Um, the four by five and a quarter, and I used our new 3D fall. Um, this is such a pretty, such a pretty embossing folder. I hope you guys can see where. But keep in mind, it isn't the whole thing. Isn't um, got the leaves? Only, only a. It's a little more than half, so it's not like it's exactly like the top, the top triangle of it, right? It's not really half. It does, it does kind of bleed through. But when I positioned my um, my panel in there, I did position it at the top. Remember where it has the, the Stampin' Up! logo, that's the front. And um, you don't want to put it all the way to the top because the image doesn't go all the way. So you can see where it rounds. And when you put it in your um, embossing, your cut and emboss, the, the closed end is what goes in first, right? So you don't, want to, you don't want to butt it all the way up to the corner, but you do. I did want to get more of the design than less. So depending, and so then when I did the strips, I actually just put the uh, uh, I just put a strip in, and then I was able to cut it down. So I do actually have two strips that match that are embossed. I can actually get them out of that little tainter thing here. There we go, just like that. And that is the fall the leaf fall 3D embossing folder that is in the um, holiday mini that I mentioned. I showed you guys. So cute. Okay, and then again, I did stamp it and then um, stamp our little hippo, and then I did die, die cut him out with our hippo dies. And I'm going to color him a little bit different. Um, I also needed another um, piece of the, uh, I want to say, I always want to say the fox, but it's <laughs> faux, the faux um, soft. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is right here. I, I tried to be too prepared, and then here it is. It's so pretty. But this one, I'm going to make the bow right off off of that instead of 
trying to cut it. I cut the other one because I knew I needed to add the color. So we will need this as well because I do have to wrap. Instead of like wrapping and then trying to tie, I love to just wrap it and then add it with the glue dot because it's so much easier. For me, it's so much easier. Okay, and then of course we need an inside panel. Your Crumb Creek is light enough to stamp on. I just really like the way it looks. I think it's much, it looks more finished when I do it. I can, and then you can really see the, the strip pop when it's on the white instead of on crumb on crumb. You'll see it, it's, it's crumb on crumb on the back, but the crumb cake on crumb cake. But um, so much I like it better. Okay, so first thing we have to do is um, when after we've dry we dry emboss our panel. I'm going to let's see if I can get this to zoom to you and see how pretty that looks. It just looks so pretty. I just really love how deep this impression is. And um, you could, of course, go over this with white or another color with a sponge or with your blending brush to kind of bring those leaves out more. I kind of like how subtle it looks with that. So again, I'm going to need my stamp and seal. And on this card, I'm going to make, make sure you know which way is your top and which way is your bottom. And I'm definitely going to put my image here because it has less leaves. And I want to have my... Um, want it lower down so it's, it's going to be below center is where I want my ribbon. So I add my stamp and seal. I'm going to wrap my ribbon. Oh, this ribbon is so pretty. We have that, that one that's the pink one that's like the same kind of feel to it. It's so pretty and it's a little bit thicker too which is nice. Um, I do love that. Yeah, I think I got a little bit too low. One thing I do love about the stamp and seal, look at that, how easy it is to just kind of peel it back and just raise it just a tiny bit so you get it where you want it to go. Awesome sauce. Now, on this one, um, we can go ahead and glue this one down. We're going to actually stamp on our circle, so we need to stamp on it before we um, add it to stamp it dimensionals always want to stamp that first because once you put stamp a dimensional and you definitely don't want to glue it down because if you make a mistake you want um, you want to ruin your card front. There we go. Do, do, do. I do I do like using the glue because I have a little bit of time to kind of get it straight. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. So then make sure you've got your your um, stamping on the right side. So, and not on the back. Um, if you mess up, you could turn it over, um, but because we're not going to color on it. When you color, um, you don't want to because it'll bring it up. And then I have actually, I'm actually using the Hello You, and I really like this Hello You. It's actually not a Halloween set. It is from Shaded Summer, which I love. Now, we found this in the catalog, and I think we had, we had the dive, maybe it was one of the celebration from last year, but it it carried over, so we have both. You can get the dies as well that cut this out. I just love all of these sentiments. They're really fabulous. I love this Hello You. Because I love Hello, but this one's kind of a Hello You with the two different fonts, which I love. I thought it went really cute. I don't know why I thought it was kind of Hello. Uh, a little um, fallish, I guess. Um, so I'm using the Memento Black. You can use Early Espresso. You could also, you know, do that with your... Um, when you're coloring with your stamping blends. However, when you remember when you color, when you, if you use one of our classic um, inks and then do the stamp stamp and blends, it will bleed. Especially if you try to use the color lifter, um, they do kind of it kind of bleeds a little bit. If you're doing like birds and stuff and you want that bleeding, it looks really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna put this. It's not halfway. It's a little. It's even above halfway. Maybe it's it's in the middle of the halfway in the top layer over on the left side. Just like that. And I went ahead and just left it memento black. Okay. So cute. And then we can add it to our card front. Need my stamping of dimensionals. We don't need a ton. Stamp of dimensionals. off. I'm going to put those. Now, I'm going to put mine, I want to put my bow right here so you can see, you can know where you're going to put your bow. So when you're placing this, 
I want it to have a little bit of the hang from my leaves, so I don't want it to be really close, right? Um, I don't want it to be I think about like right there. Just kind of think about where you want it. And then I have the hello, because you can rotate this. Make sure you, you have your hello in the way you want it to go. So I've got it kind of so that it's level with um, the ribbon, wrap ribbon. Just like that. Now I look, I look, even with my best effort, I got a little bit of glue on that side. So before I build more up, I'm going to use my eraser. You can get these craft erasers. Stampin' Up! used to sell them, but you can get them. They're only a dollar, two bucks on Amazon, or I think I found some at the, the, dollar, the dollar Tree, the dollar store. Um, so that's nice. I love that. Craft, a craft glue eraser it works fantastic. Make sure you've got that nice and clean. Okay, and then we're going to do our hippo. So now we need to color our hippo, and then when we put our hippo on, we'll make sure we put... Um, we're going to make sure we put our dimensionals over so that we can tuck all of the pretty leaves that I've already cut out on there. First, let's color him. So for the other one, I used the ivory. This one, I'm going to do the, com the crumb cake. I used yeah, a crumb cake. There's the other crumb cake. I am still going to use the gray for um, his toenails, the dark smoky slate. And But I'm not going to use the light granite. So I use the light granite. So this one is the, um, on, doo -doo -doo. this one I used, the light granite. Now this one, to make this color, I actually am going to go over the dark with the light granite after I'm done. To kind of lighten him up a little bit, but it's so cute. Okay, so let's get my light crumb cake. That's what I'm going to use for his tummy and face. Again, I'm not going all the way to the edge. So I don't have I don't have the control that I used to have. I gotta hold my tongue just right. Oh, so you can do all kinds of. It looks good. I mean, you can be really really careful with your coloring, especially if you like it, or you can just get it done. So if you just, you can layer, instead of using two different colors, you know, as much layer as you put on with your ink kind of helps give it a little bit of the molting. But you want to not wait too long between layers because with Stampin' Blends, I think it's the more, ink, the more ink you put down, the better it blends. But again, if you put too much color down, it is darker, right? But Although it does lighten up. I want it to blend nice. Go. Oh, it's so cute. These guys are so toads of dwarves. Okay. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna use a dark slate for his finger, fingernails, fingernails. I mean, I guess I could have colored them. Um, because I want all my colors to be that crumb cake. And her and the ballerina had the, the ballerina shoes. So I didn't want to color their toenails, but it'd be cute if you color their their toenail their their little toenails. I guess I should have made it a little more. Do and do that. The focus thingy, right? Okay. Go. And then his outer I'm gonna use the dark crumb cake. Oh no, I think I grabbed the wrong one. This is the one that gives me trouble. I have a hard time getting it open. I just pull the pull it right off. It's ah. I see I have my other one. Let me grab it really quick. When it gets like that, I just wanna toss it. <laughs> I can't get the, I can't get them off. I used to have much more strength. Um, before I broke my wrists. Don't do that. It's terrible. There we go. I have. Sometimes I'll, I'll be a little bit too, pull a little bit too much, and then I have to um, actually pull the tip right off. Not the felt part, but the the inside before the, it inks, what is it, the well? Um, I forget what that's called. Um, but you can 
um, just that happens, just put it in really tight and then give it a second <laughs> and, and then and then use less force to try to pull it apart. I just don't seem to have the control I used to have. It's just some blends are on there. It's a little bit too tight. Although I actually took all mine to Tucson, which is a much different elevation from where I'm at now. And, you know, things, the glue can sometimes, like, explode out when you first open it. And so I don't know if that had something to do with some of my lids sticking, but um, they just pop back on. I don't usually have, I, have, I kind of have a hard time with it, so I didn't want to struggle, so I've got new ones. I actually find that I use my Stampin' Blend so much, I have on occasion, actually, um used all of mine. So what I'm going to do after I get the um, the brown on, I, the dark crumb cake, I'm going to go back over this with my light gray granite. Um, and it's just going to change the color a tiny bit. It's not going to color, it's not going to change it a lot, but we'll change it a little bit. I don't know if you've played with doing color, you know, more than just the regular colors, right? Like you've been we've actually colored on top of each other. And then we're going to use the petal pink on this guy to make his little cheeks. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, first let's do finish what I was doing before I get distracted. Light gray granite. And it's not suede, but it does change it just the ever so much. Because it the ink moves it around a little bit. The ink underneath moves around just just a little bit. Changes it just a little bit. It's kind of cool. It's like a different color. A little bit of texture. If you've done a bunch of hippos and they're all the same, you want something a little bit different, you can try that. Try coloring over your other, your other color. Blending it in. Super cute! Oh my gosh. Okay, so then I want to um, add the petal pink. So what I'm going to do with the light petal pink, I'm just going to use a light petal pink. I'm just going to, and you definitely need the bullet tip. So just like right above his little nose um, and under the eyes, I'm just going to do a little line. You can see it will pull some of the color out. You guys see that? I don't know if you can see it. It pulls the color out. You can really see it when it dries. On him, you can really see it. Maybe. It adds just a little bit of pink to his nose. It's not a lot. It is a little, and it's so cute. And then I add a little bit of pink to his ears. Just for a little bit of different color. I don't know why. I'm just kind of in the mood to make him a little bit different. So I added a little bit um, of that color. It's so cute. It will look so cute. Okay, so then, like I said, we're going to add him to our card front. And um, when we do that, we need to put the... Make sure you do it on the right, on his right side. Do I'll put three. Oh, see, that's too leany. Move it over just a tiny bit. That's what I need to do. Okay, so I'm putting it, if you guys can see, I have it, so most of this is free, right? But I need to have a little bit of stability, so don't do it as close. At first I went way too far over. I need to have it a little bit. But you want it to be like that so that you can tuck all that, so you can tuck all of the other pieces underneath. And um, I want him, he's about here. He's so cute. And then I'm going to show you guys a, a bunch. I, I just went a little crazy with all of our little leaves. And so um, there are quite a few different types of leaves on that sheet of designer series paper. Um, I really like the ones that have like a little bit of blue. And then with the, I ended up using the ones that are that brown because it matches the, the um, it's very close, very close to um, the crumb cake. So good. There we go. 
like the littler, littler leaves, so I just cut a bunch out. Now I'm just going to arrange them kind of how I want before I glue them down, just so I kind of know how it is. And I put four in there. These are pretty big, wide sprigs. Kind of see how you want it to do it. And then I'm going to add the gems on the inside. So you can see I was looking at the other one. Just like that. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. So like I said, I cut them out. So I was going to make a pile of these ones. I cut a bunch of these ones out. So he was jumping in it. <laughs> but um, he kind of, the, the because they're all very similar in color, they're too similar in color, you kind of lose some of the definition um, when you try to group them all together, which is why I ended up going that. It just looks so pretty. Okay, so these ones, I'm, again, I'm just going to use glue and tuck them in. And I kind of layer them. Just use a little bit of glue. So I love to fussy cut. You do have um, a couple of things that you could punch out. If you didn't want to fussy cut. Um, you have a, a bow punch, which is very cute. You can add, um, but I just love these leaves. I wanted to use them. So pretty. And I do have a thing for fussy cutting. So just make sure when you're layering it out that you keep that, that other edge. You're adding the layers. You remember where that, that outer edge is so that you don't um, you don't make your, bu your bouquet way so big that you can't fit it in an envelope if you want to. If you don't mind, if you're not going to try to put it in an envelope, then it doesn't matter. When you're putting it on your card, just make sure you know kind of where your edges are where you want it to go. So I've got them a little bit overlapping each other, but not by a lot. And then like right here is where I'm going to put a gem. I'm going to use one of those fine speckled gems, which are um, oh, one of my new favorites. They're just so fabulous. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. Okay. Go. Awesome. Look at that. It's so easy. So yeah, so I actually took a page while I was watching TV and, and just made I got the, these little containers and just fill them with a bunch of different leaves because I just loved it so much. Love adding all the leaves to everything. Okay, so move all those out of the way. I lose them. And then I'll just put them in a Ziploc bag and say what, what paper they're from and put them away um, if I have any left. Usually I just leave them in the little container because I'm going to do it. Look at this little butterfly. Oh my gosh. And the mushrooms on this, from this one sheet of paper. This totes adorbs. I, yeah. I'm going to make projects with it. And it's just fabulous. Like, I'm very excited. Okay. I did want to add some Wink Estella. Definitely want to add Wink. I'm going to add Wink to his eye or her eyes. Little eyes. I'm going to add it to the little bit of pink. Little pink that I added. That. Ooh, I forgot to petal pink his mouth. Mmm. That's not too much coloring. I can I can actually add that little bit in. And then add the go. So cute. And then I'm gonna use where's my take a pick tool. Okay, add these fine spec um sparkle gems to my card front. One, using the big ones. Two, I think where I want to fit. Just want to get it in a good place. Go, and I put another one, and I just use the bigger ones. I find I use the littler ones the more, so I have a bunch of big ones usually left over. Let me see. What do you think? Just put down here on the bottom. Or you could put it over here on the edge, depending on how, how your foliage lines up. But this just adds just a little bit of sparkle. It's really pretty. Now it just needs that finishing touch of our ribbon. So again, I'm going to take that, that um, the soft suede faux trims. Soft suede. Is it, what is it called? Suede trim? No, it's early espresso. Bow suede trim. Okay, so I'm gonna again. I'm gonna make a small bow. So that means I don't need a huge, a huge tail because I don't want to waste too much. Um, I don't want to waste.
waste too much ribbon. So let's see if I got it. Go. Just my fingers down. Manhandle that bow a little bit. I know that there's tricks. I saw somebody said they had a fork technique. Um, I think they have like little bow making dowels. I don't know. I, this is how I tie my shoes, I think. <laughs> I just do it the same way. I just now you need to remember how much tail to leave when I start. That's always the problem. My problem is to get how much of a tail because I want to. I want to not. Um, I don't want to use it that much. I want to save every bit of ribbon that I can. It breaks me inside to throw a decent size piece off. Like that little. Those little pieces I'll probably save because they would make great little add-ons. Okay, so I'm gonna take. Let's see. I don't want it to be too big. Again, I'm going to cut it at a little bit of an angle. Go. Poof, little, little pieces a little bit. There we go. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then, oh, I did it the other way. Pull it tight. And then I'm going to add it just like that. I'm going to have the bow go the other way. But again, I'm going to need to use my emergency supply of glue dots. Although, like I said, I actually use these for um, when I do sequins because I love the sequins. Um, and although we have some, I don't use them as much because we have that really great, well, a lot of our sequins have the, um, they're self-backed, right? They have sequins. The glue on them, a the little glue dot on them, which makes it so much easier to use. I just love it. But sometimes I'm too, take them off too quickly. Don't grab the whole thing. I still need them. So I'm just going to have it overlap. So it does actually overlap a little bit of the stitching, but it is, again, overlapping the wrapped part of the, of the other wrapped ribbon. So it kind of goes side. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? So super cute. Okay, so let's go out more out. And now I'm going to do the inside. Love these gems. And and if you didn't see before, there are the darker color on the inside. Those ones I actually use for my um, thank you card. I use most of all the pink ones that I had, the darker. I think they're the, the sweet sorbet. Um, because I was using those on the on the cards and have a bunch of the other ones, but oh my gosh, I had to. When I was doing my paper pumpkin, um, I'm gonna go live with the paper pumpkin. I think it's Wednesday. I think it's next Wednesday. Um, hopefully everyone will have had, get their paper pumpkin by then. And um, I had, thought I've added some of those jewels. I just couldn't help it. Cause they're just so super cute. Okay, again, I have a strip that I had embossed. I'm gonna put it on my inside panel. And then I'm going to put the Hello You down on the corner because that is like my newest thing. I don't know why. It's like blue that looks. So cute. Put it down here on the bottom. Ah, like that. I think that's all I did on the inside. Look. Yep, that's it. I just did something different on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in. On my inside. Just like that. Oh, it's so cute. So good. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay. Then I'm going to stamp back. I'm going to use another one. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at the limited edition that's in the new annual catalog. Um, it has a super cute as like a uh, made with love, a one of a kind creation, a paper hug for me. And it has the little addition with the little um, flower and it has a hand stamped. And these ones have the copyright. Um, the Just For You um, does not, but we have one of the copyright by itself. That's one I almost use all the time. But I also really am starting to love this handcrafted from the heart. So I've been using this one too a lot, but I just keep it right here. 
so that I can remember to um, to always do that. And I love the way it looks um, after I've stamped it. Um, and yes, on occasion I have messed it up, but um, I just love the way it just just doesn't seem finished when it without it. Um, maybe it's because I grew up in the '80s and I'm like look in the back for the Hallmark signs. So I want to look on the back for my stamping up. Just so cute. So again, oh, so cute. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to go ahead and put the hello view at the top in the back. Just like that. Again, and it looks like I got a little bit of glue. Oh my goodness, I got my ribbon caught in the ink. I have to clean this because look, now I've got, I got ink on my ribbon. Be careful with that. Sometimes they're a menace. Especially if you're messy like I am. Put all these away. I'm not getting it all over everything. And then I had a, a little bit of glue right here. Softly take it off. Make sure you don't have any more glue on your fingers. It's almost as bad for me as um, ink. But there you go. Look at that. Turned out so pretty. So this is, again, the hippest hippos and uh, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of very cute things I did a, a cute one um, earlier in the week with this this hippo I think I did the one with the flower use all three they're so cute they really are tons of dwarves but this one is we can do one for Halloween and for fall